Hello, my name is John Myers and I'm a nursing student at South Alabama and I'll be preparing you for an IV insertion today. So as I walk in, I will perform hand hygiene and I will make sure I have the right patient with two identifiers. So I have Jaguar Jones and Jaguar Jones and the date of birth is 825-1963 and 825-1963. Uh, I see that you have an allergy to penicillin on your patient care order form and on your wristband. Do you have any other allergies? No. All right, so I will also make sure that I have the right order, which I do, uh, and then I will verify the hospital policy. All right, so now I will gather all of my equipment, uh, explain the procedure to the patient, and provide pri privacy by closing the curtain. Uh, I will grab the trash can and put it in the correct position, which is gonna be over here, uh, and I'll perform hand hygiene again and dye my goggles. So now I will uh, open my packaging using sterile technique, uh, but first I'm going to position the patient comfortably. So I'll raise the bed, uh, lower the side rails, and make sure that they are in supine or sitting up. Uh, and I'll also make sure to maintain privacy as well. Okay, so now I'll open everything. I'll use the two pieces of tape for later. All right, and then I'm going to open my packages that I will need. So I'm going to use my alcohol swab. And clean the injection cap. And then while maintaining sterility, I will open the saline uh, syringe and prime it. And then I will also maintain sterility while inserting it to the uh, injection cap and then make sure to loosen the protector cap. And then I will lay it back down on the sterile uh, packaging. And then next I will Open the over the needle catheter and the transparent film tagaderm. Right, and then I'm going to put the tourniquet on the patient, uh, going four to six inches above the desired site. Alright, so I will be checking for a radial pulse and then I'll also be uh, looking for the appropriateness of the vein. Uh, if I do not, if I need more time uh, preparing, I can take the uh, tourniquet off, but I do not need time right now. So now I will put my clean gloves on. And I'm going to move everything closer to the patient. All right, and then I'm going to clean the site. And I will uh, squeeze these sides to activate the chlorhexidine. Uh, and then I will clean in a vertical and horizontal and circular motion uh, for 30 seconds 
And then after uh, I clean for 30 seconds, I will make sure to let the area dry and I will not touch the area. Now I'm going to start an IV on my patient. So I'm gonna start by grabbing my over the needle catheter and removing the cap and throwing that into the sharps container. Uh, then I'm going to anchor the IV or anchor with the uh, vein of my patient by pulling one and a half to two inches below the insertion site uh, and making sure I'm pulling away from uh, the direction I'm gonna be inserting. And then I'm also gonna make sure I don't touch the cleansed area of my patient and make sure that the over needle catheter does not touch my anchoring thumb. So I'm going to advise the patient to remain still and that the trophial light stick. So when I insert it, I wanna make sure that the bevel of the needle is up and I'll go at a 10 to 30 degree angle. And then once I, well, And then once I see blood return, I will lower the needle and go in another quarter inch. And then I will advance the catheter to the hub. And while stabilizing the IV and the stylet, I will remove the tourniquet. And this is known as the push and pop, which reduces patient arm. So I'll put pressure an inch and a quarter above uh, the insertion site and remove the stylet completely. And then I will quickly grab my IV lock. And secure it to the hub of the catheter. And temporarily tape it down. So then I will check for blood return by gently aspirating. And once I see blood return, I will insert the saline into the patient to flush out the IV. Then once I finish flushing it, I'm going to remove the saline. Uh, make it, and I'll also look for any swelling while I was uh, flushing the IV. So I'll dispose of that into the sharps container. Uh, next, I will grab my Tegaderm. Make sure to not touch the sterile portion of it. All right, and then I will put it on the patient, making sure that it is flush and not touching the uh, IV extension. All right, then I'll save this for later. Uh, next, I will permanently secure the IV to my patient. with tape, letting the, uh, the extension tube go to its natural position. All right, and now I'll remove my gloves. Of them. Uh, now I will grab the label and write my initials, date, time, and the gauge of the catheter that was used and stick it on the top of the tegaderm. And then next I will raise the side rails um, lower the bed and position the patient comfortably. Uh, then I will talk to the patient about uh, the signs and symptoms of 
um, IV complications, which are phlebitis, uh, infiltration, and inflammation. I'll also make sure that they know to be careful while they're moving around so that they do not pull the IV out. Uh, I'll make sure that they let me know if the flow rate uh, decreases of the IV solution or if it stops completely. And then uh, I'll make sure that they let me know if they see any blood in the tubing or uh, any blood under the tegaderm. Uh, after, and then I'll also let them know uh, if they wanted to get a shower that they could let me know so I could properly wrap the uh, IV so it does not get wet. So now I'll perform hand hygiene uh, and I'll report to the nurse's station and I'll document the time, date, uh, location of the catheter, or location of the IV, the number of attempts that it took to insert it, uh, the gauge, uh, gauge and length of the needle and catheter, how the patient re uh, responded to the procedure, uh, the flow rate or uh, saline lock if there was one, and then the uh, infusion device used for the medications if they were prescribed any. All right, so now I'm going to discontinue uh, the IV for the patient. So I'll walk in, perform hand hygiene, and I will discontinue the IV solution uh, if there's one still going. Then I can, I'll raise the bed, I'll lower the side rails, and then put on my gloves, my clean gloves and goggles. All right, so now I will use a towel or a water absorbent pad and put it under the patient's arm or hand. Okay, and then I will stabilize the IV catheter and slowly pull the tachyderm from the inside the middle or from the outside to the middle So now that I have that off, get my gauze ready and remove the tape. I'm just supposed to do that also. And I'll get my gauze fold it over and put it at the top of the hub of the catheter. And when I pull the catheter out, I'll make sure to go parallel with it, with the uh, vein. So I'll pull it out and hold pressure. Uh, then I will inspect for intactness of the catheter and dispose of it in the shark container. Uh, I can hold pressure for about 30 seconds. Uh, 
on patients, but if they're on anti or anticoagulants, uh, they would need to be have pressure held for five to ten minutes. Uh, so then we're going to tape the gauze to that patient's hand. And then I will dispose of my uh, dispose of everything. Uh, I will raise the si raise the side rail, uh, lower the patient's bed, and make sure that they're comfortable. Um, and then I will perform. I have to take my gloves off. Then I'll lower the side or raise the side rail, lower the bed, make sure they're comfortable. Uh, then I will report to the nurses station to document.